thanks for joining. Welcome, everybody. Um, also from me, I've invited you today to, um, as, as we have arrived at the halfway point almost of the BSO project, if, um, I've invited you today. And so we want to give you some updates about what has happened um, follow up on some of the discussions that we had earlier this year. Um, and a lot has happened, let's try straight in. You might already be familiar with this slide. Um, this just gives you some coordinates about our project, duration, the length, um, who we work with, and also who are, we are financed by. And this is what we are going to talk about in the next 15, 10, 15 minutes on my part. So I'm going to recap what BSO is about, uh, who we work with, most importantly, what we work towards. Now it's time to look back as well as forward, I think. So for a brief summary, uh, Bilder der Schweiz Online Images of Switzerland is, an in, is interested in the depictions of historical Switzerland. We are looking at spatial as well as temporal uh, vectors to understand how the country and its way of depicting it um, has changed between circa 1700s and 1950. And during that time span, we're looking at um, objects like prints, aquarels, photos, sketches, postcards, and other media. Among them, and you can see an example of this on the right, are illustrations of scenic travel routes through Switzerland, the Voyage Pittoresque, um, created by minor masters at the time. And the metadata and images that we work with have been provided by the Zurich Central Library, the National Library, Swiss National Library, and also the Filman Family Foundation. And currently we have linked already 20, around 28,000 objects and more are to come. Now our goals are threefold. We already recognized this slide. On a technical level, we aim to link the data, the archival data and the images according to linked open data standards. Um, this means that pre we're pre preparing our data in a way that ensures re reusability in the future and allows various technologies to interact with it, like IIIF image manifests or reference vocabularies. And on a scientific level, we want to research historical images of Switzerland, of course. More on this in a bit, but in general, we're interested in grasping what we already know and also want to enrich this existing knowledge with new insights, new information, new research. And finally, our initiative, of course, has also a didactic aim. Beyond the academic research context, we want to make the information from our project accessible and interesting for a wide public. We want Swiss citizens to be able to learn about the history of their surroundings. And how this is done will be explained by Michael Mattil and Sophie Gurman later this afternoon. But just as a quick recap of the project timeline. And the first year was marked by project initiation and development a time of data analysis, modeling, and curating. And this half year was characterized by working more in depth on the specification um, of the contents of our platform. And from September onwards, we're planning to arrive at phase three of our project, the consolidation and implementation period. I'm looking, really looking forward to this. This is when things will become visible. Next, a note on our institutional settings. So BSO is hosted, of course, at the University of Zurich and is on, worked on simultaneously with the Swiss Art Research Infrastructure, SARI, and the Institute for Art History here, shortened to CAHIST. On this slide, you can see my colleagues associated with the initiative BSO at the University of Zurich. They all do amazing work, and I really want to express my heartfelt thanks to all of you. You're doing a great job. You can also see that BSO is divided into two parts. So we have... Um, Part project one on the left side with Thomas Hansley as the lead um, at Sari and Michael Matil as lead of part project two on the right side um, at CAHIST. And what Sari does is that it provides a technological framework for BSO. It is where we analyze, curate, link, visualize research data with various digital applications and with processes. And by dedicating itself to various research projects in the realm of cultural heritage data in the digital environment, Sari has developed expertise, workflows, and applications, like a technology stack that gets refined and expanded with each project that it works with. And for PSO, this means that we can benefit, from, for example, from existing models, um, pipelines as well, and reference data, things you will hear more about in this afternoon. And as a project, we can also contribute back into this library of possibilities that Sari establishes. And then, of course, we also have the Institute of Art History, namely the section for modern art history chaired by Tristan Wedding. 
And this is the location of the PART project too. It provides a frame of reference for asking some of our research questions. And also I will talk about that in a bit. Led by Michel Mathiel, the BSO PART project too is especially concerned with specifying requirements towards digital tools, with using them to understand and enrich available information and with developing didactic tools for communicating research outcomes to a broader public. And of course, we couldn't do without you, our project partners. From the get-go, BSO got embedded in partnerships with three core partners. They are the Zurich Central Library and Swiss National Library, who both supplied us with metadata excerpts on their Helvetica connected collections of modern prints, drawings and photos. And of course, also the Filman Family Foundation, which, in addition to sharing collection data and images with us, also generously supports us financially. And since the project started, we have further established collaborations with Smapshot and the initiative Time Machine Europe. Also the Digital Society, Society and the Digital Visual Studies initiatives at the University of Zurich provide frameworks in which we can exchange ideas, get inspiration, collaborate on finding solutions, etc. Thank you also to all of you. And this is just as for, infor for your information. You can find out more about the BSO project's involvement with the Time Machine Europe um, via this link. And we already had some preliminary discussions about some of um, the things we could find from our data. So there's more exciting discoveries to be made in that direction as well. But let's return to the core of our project, the content. Here a randomized display from the Vicus viewer visualization that Florian greatly has created. We have already noticed how diverse the objects are that we are working with. You can see here, we have drawings, engravings, collages, postcards, book pages, vedutas. They show insights, outlooks, overviews. They show people, landscapes, uh, natural catastrophes sometimes, events, cultural events. And they also range along an artistic spectrum, ranging from very simple sketches to elaborately colored engravings. And faced with such a versatile collection of pictures from and about Switzerland, our project has developed two main vectors for research. Firstly, we want to understand whether the depictions of Switzerland were created on functional or artistic grounds, um, very basically said. Secondly, we also want to know who is to blame or who is responsible for how uh, the, the, those works were made, how they look, which decisions were in the background. So more about the social network behind their production. But let's start with the intended function of the depictions of Switzerland, the focus point one. Based on an initial survey of the images that we work with, we assume that the geographic reality and the of the actual landscape does not entirely match the depicted landscape. So because we, under, be, because we want to understand why those differences are there, we ask the question, how does the geographic reality and the depicted landscape differ? And to gain data about this dichotomy, we intend to collect geospatial information on the viewpoint, the depicted places, and the distortion between depicted and geographical appearance. Where do we look at the object as illustrations, particularly as historical documentation of scientific progress of some sort, for example, urban development, or art, which is also not mutually exclusive, has implications for what kind of information about the past we can deduct from them. Especially these terms in the middle here of this Venn diagram, they gain different semantic meanings against either documentative or artistic backdrops. This cover page from the Voyage Pittoresque de Genève à Milan par le Simple illustrates my point rather well. This page, this page clearly contains some elements that function as scientific illustrations, such as diagrams, maps, charts. Simultaneously, sorry, you can still hear me? Simultaneously, the page also contains what I would interpret as small artistic illustration on the top right. These wonderful pictures are from the same album. From an artistic point of view, we might ask questions regarding frequency of and perspective towards depicted motifs. And you've seen this slide before, 
probably, on the example of the Isola Bella and a simplified rendering of the viewpoints and the viewing directions on the map, you can see that the sequence of images by and large follows the road along the Lago Maggiore. This is essentially what I mean with collecting geospatial information. But while playing with Google Maps is fun for a case study, this is less feasible when we want to tackle a stack of around 10,000 images. So to achieve large scale geospatial tacking, we have decided to collaborate with the initiative Smapshot. I'm very happy um, that Jens Ingenson um, is attending today as well. Uh, Smapshot has developed a workflow to approximate geospatial information about the place from where an image was taken. And while this process, process was developed in the context of geolocalizing geo aerial photography, we are all very intrigued about the results of applying the workflow to our slightly distorted landscape depictions of the BSO collection. Here's an initial test run. You can already see that the peak of the mountain here on the bottom right was exaggerated in height in, compar in comparison to the geographical reality. But let's go to our second focal point of research, the social networks around print production. The objects in our image and data collection are works of minor masters, which means that not a lot of primary or secondary literature is available on the individual objects and their moment of creation. Print, production, print productions are complex processes with many steps and participants, as well as an image that undergoes a transformation of medium from sketch to printed block to completed print. We are interested in who was engaged in the production of works. This includes the individual prints and album publications, namely the Voyage Pittoresque. Our primary source for understanding this production network are the captions that are printed alongside the images. So it's primary um, information directly with the image. More about this in the building knowledge section later this afternoon. Now, a final word on why we do it why we do this and how this is going to make a difference. To recap recapitulate, I'm sorry, our project vision, vision is to study and convey knowledge about Switzerland and its depictions. Our technical aim is to connect, enrich and visualize institutional records on Helvetica. Enabled by those functionalities, our research goal is to create visualizations of our data which are directly connected to our linked data graph. These tools should help us think about data in new ways. And finally, we're also seeking to branch out didactically in that we're working on creating a low threshold access to information in order to connect the public to their cultural heritage and enable them to access diverse histories connected to their geographic context. Now, the most important question remaining is how we're going to achieve all this. Later, I'm going to talk about building knowledge from Project Desauri, but mainly I would like to pass over to my colleague Florian Kreitli, who is going to take you through the technical workflow. That's it for me for the moment. Over to you, Florian. Thank you. <laughs> 